Hey you guys, I am Bianca. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you love my videos enough to subscribe. I'm gonna start off with these three pumpkins. I recently did a fall haul and it included these three pumpkin signs. So if you wanna see that, I'll leave it at the top and you can check that out. Um, it includes not just Dollar Tree fall decor, but Hobby Lobby and Walmart and a thrift store find as well. I'm gonna go ahead and turn these around and use the back side, of course, because this has glitter all on the front. So I'm gonna use this side. And I already removed the little part that was connected right there. As you can see, this is how it's connected. I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of these from each of them and then um, to make it look more farmhouse since that is my style right there i'm gonna add twine instead the first thing i'm gonna do is remove the middle areas of this pumpkin and move it to the side and i'm gonna take my territorial beige and go ahead and paint each of the outside of these pumpkins so each of these have the center of the pumpkin right here what I did was I went online and I found these pretty little printouts one says harvest gather and autumn so I found these on a blissful nest blog I will link it below she actually has 30 free printables on there she has a lot of cute ones on there so what I did was when I printed these out it saves on your computer as a pdf i lowered it to 70 percent to fit on the pumpkin so if you want to get it exactly like how i have it you will lower it to 70. so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna move two to the side i'm gonna take my pumpkin put this on the top in the center and i'm gonna trace it I have all three cut out. Now what I'm gonna do is take my Mod Podge, it's in matte. I'm gonna move these two to the side again. And take one, and I'm gonna wipe the Mod Podge all on here. Okay, once I have that on, I'm gonna wipe my hands because I don't wanna put any Mod Podge on top of this. I'm not gonna seal the top. I'm just gonna leave it like that. Oh, and I used cardstock paper for this. To me, it's just a little easier to use that because I don't have any bubbles on here. Now that these are done drying, I'm gonna take some of my Nutmeg Brown from Apple Barrel on a sponge brush and start to do some little streaks of this. I'm using the same brush I used to paint the territorial beige. So it's giving me both colors. Okay, so as you can see, I, I poked a hole in this one. All I did was just use a little toothpick. And what I did was I poked it from the back, but I should do it to the front so it doesn't 
tear my paper. I do it slow because I don't want it to rip the paper. So I'm doing that because I'm gonna go ahead and use the Dollar Tree Raffia to connect all three of these, the center of the little pumpkin, which are these, to the frame of the pumpkin. All right, so I applied all three of the raffias to each of the holes to connect them with the rim of the pumpkin. I did it like that first because I needed to make sure I at least do three knots so it holds it well, so that way it won't fall off or tear off. Now I am going to connect these with my hot glue gun and then I'm gonna add some raffia bows to these three knots. So I have the two bows on this one already. Before cutting off the edges, I go ahead and glue it down with my hot glue. So you can leave as little or as much as you want on here if you use this. Or you can use regular ribbon. Now I'm gonna connect all three. So of course this is optional. Anything I do for these DIYs is optional. You can paint it differently, you can put a different picture in the middle or you can stencil on some words. And also you don't have to connect them like I'm going to. If you want to leave them separately, put all three next to each other, you can do that as well. But I wanna connect them because I want a, a long pumpkin sign. So I kinda set it up the way I want it. All right, you guys, so I just hung this up with some command strips. That's what I normally do with all of my items that I put on the wall. I like to use command strips because it doesn't damage your walls. They're my favorite thing to use. So this is in my entryway. I decided to put it in here. So yeah, as you can see, I have a command strip right there because I had something bigger right here. So let's go ahead and move on to the second one. All right, for this next one, I'm gonna be making two barn doors. What I grabbed was four Dollar Tree frames. I already opened one because I wanted to see exactly how I was gonna set all of this up. And I'm gonna show you how I remove the back because the Dollar Tree frames, if you are not familiar with them they're very flimsy and they can break very easily so I'm just gonna show you real quickly how I take the backing out so it, it doesn't break and then I bought this 45 pack of super jumbo craft sticks from Walmart now in my last videos that I've used these I actually had the giant ones which are way bigger than these when I went today I didn't find them so I had to go with the next best thing which were these and this is the next size down from the giant ones that i normally get it doesn't exactly fit on the bottom perfectly what i'm gonna do is take some smaller popsicle or craft sticks and basically make a border on the side with them and they also sell these at dollar tree as well all right so i'm gonna open this up and show you how i remove the back if i can get it open oh my goodness Okay, so I actually was just doing it this way, but it still kind of moves the side of the frame out to where it could break. So when you do this, it's very simple. Just make sure you hold the side and 
do it like that. So obviously it's common sense, but earlier I was, like I said, just doing it like this without holding the side and it could possibly break like that. All right, so now I'm gonna move these to the side. I'm gonna grab my plastics. I've already started to cut the small craft sticks to apply on the side. So I'm gonna show you real quickly. I cut two of these, just the edges off. And they're gonna go like this. Just like that, I'm gonna sand down the edges like I normally do. So I'm gonna end up gluing that down. I'm just cutting everything first and then I'm gonna stain them. So now that I have those pieces cut, I can just grab one and use it to measure the rest. So I'm gonna do this for all four frames. All right, so this is how they look once sanded down a little. So I'm gonna need to do this four times. Now guys, remember, if you find the giant craft sticks like I wish I would have found at Walmart, then you don't have to do this part as far as the border goes. I'm only doing this because, like I said, this doesn't fit perfectly in the frame, so I'm hiding that by using these. I have all of these small craft sticks ready to go to stain, and then I have the 45 pack of these craft sticks that I'm just gonna go ahead and stain all of them because I need 40 and there's 45, so I might as well just stain all of them just in case. And I just bought this new stain yesterday from Minwax. It's called Golden Oak 210B. And I wanted a lighter stain because I have a dark one that I always use. So for this one, I think it'll look really nice because the frame is black. And then with the lighter stain, I think it will stand out. So what I'm gonna do is just take the old, an old rag that I always use for my stains. As you can see, it is all stained up with the darker stain. I always take a little piece of it, cut off a piece, grab some of the stain. Once I rub all of this on, like I have been showing you guys lately in my videos, I'm gonna rub off the excess. Now, time for the big craft sticks. So now I'm gonna take a frame, turn it around, and I'm gonna start gluing everything with my hot glue gun. I would recommend E6000, of course, but for video purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and use my hot glue gun. Now I didn't remove these, I think they're called prongs on the side. So now I can just push them down to give it more support. All right, you guys, if you look at any barn doors on Pinterest, you can see that the boards are up and down this way. So that is how I'm gonna put them when I assemble all four of them. I'm gonna put two together like this and two on the other side. I've decided to go with this look right here. I'm going to create two X's on the bottom portion of these barn doors with the smaller craft sticks. Of course, I'm going to 
cut them, cut off the, the round edges, and then I'm gonna stain them real quick and then glue them down like that. And I decided to go with that because I've seen this one and it looks nice. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then I will be gluing this frame to this one like that and then this one to this one so it's like there's two barn doors and of course you need to use E6000 to connect these two Okay, now what I'm gonna do is take a bunch of the small crab sticks and glue them down this way to secure the middle part so it doesn't just like fold and break. Last time I made something like this, somebody commented that I applied too many crab sticks to the back, to this area, like what I'm doing right now. And I just thought, why would it matter? You can't see it anyways and it's for a secure hold so it won't break. So, I mean, the more you put, the better, I feel. All right, you guys, so for this last DIY, I'm gonna be making two raffia wreaths for the barn doors. I have one made right here. I just wanted it to look really rustic. I absolutely live for this, guys. I love rustic farmhouse decor right now. So, I thought it was so cute. Once I was done, I'm just gonna stick it on the top part of the barn door. If you choose to, you can definitely add more to give it more of a full look, but I'm just gonna leave it just like this. I like the way this looks. All I did was grab one of these Dollar Tree napkin rings. They have this in a, I think like a four pack, I believe, and this was obviously used for something else. And I just took it off of that because I already had some and I didn't wanna run to Dollar Tree again to pick up more because literally guys I am at Dollar Tree like three four times a week so then I have a lot of Dollar Tree raffia and then I also have the Dollar Tree pine cones this is actually out for Christmas right now and I love using this all you have to do is grab a piece of raffia I would say a few pieces to make it faster a few thick pieces all right so I have three pieces together take a little bit of hot glue be very careful not to burn your fingers. I already did, but I always do so. I'm just gonna put this, hold it tight, let it dry a little so you can start wrapping the napkin ring with the raffia. Then you're gonna just start wrapping this whole thing with the raffia. Okay, then I'm gonna hold on to it and cut some off. So as you can see, I already have some sticking out since I cut that. Now what I'm gonna do is start taking pieces of this again, but smaller pieces. And this is of course depending on what you want to do. So I'm just taking a bunch of different size pieces like this. All right, so I have five pieces. What I learned, so you don't burn yourself, is to stick this in there first and then figure out where you want it to go. And the messier, the better, uh, in my opinion. I love the way this one came out. It's gonna look so cute on that little barn door that we just made. Okay, you guys, so I'm just showing you how they look without the little raffia wreaths. I put both of the barn doors right next on each side of the little pumpkin centerpiece that we made.
All right, you guys, so here is the final look. I am obsessed. I love those little wreaths. They're so adorable. I'm so happy with everything. I hope you guys can give these DIYs a try. If you do, remember, just let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Also, guys, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new. And I will see you guys in the next video.